Well, it looks like I'm not getting any sleep tonight. I've been fearing this for a while, but I guess I got to get this out of the way if I want to get any shy. The game was produced back in 1990 by Data East. On the surface, the game itself looks kind of cool. Hell, on the game cartridge, it shows the werewolf character literally popping out of the cover, giving you the illusion that the game will be awesome. To be honest, I was actually intrigued at the game when I was looking for other NES games last year at a pawn shop called Trader John's. But as I got home, something told me that I was mistaken about my purchase. I mean, with other games like Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, or Donkey Kong Country, they seem to have higher prices that go up to being like $30 or $40. That makes sense, because they are much well received games. With that in mind, how do you think I felt when I realized how much this game cost? Now I know what you're all thinking, wouldn't I look at the price on the cartridge before I decide to buy it? <laughs> well, um, you see, uh, shut up. Anyway, I mainly got it for my collection, because, you know, I want to build my NES collection, that kind of goes without saying, you have to buy crappy games to do that. <laughs> but, um, as I realized I have to have said game in my NES toppler, I realized that I'm not getting any sleep until I play the damn thing. As the game starts up, you would think that would be very interesting. The graphics look appealing, and there's an interesting storyline. The plot is that an evil scientist named Fargan has led a band of bile monsters to capture the entire planet. Any attempts to stop him, no matter what strategy or weapon, prove to be fuel. Only one unnamed man can save the day as he can turn into a werewolf. As the game starts, it already aids you by informing you of power-ups. As afterward, you already have your first boss to fight. The first thing to grab your attention is, this guy is half naked. What is it, the Incredible Hulk? When you receive a red W sign, you instantly transform into your true form. And here is a problem that you may find with many NES games. The screen flashes insanely, enough that it feels like as if you're going to indulge into having a seizure. As you progress, you notice that you can hit things like signs or statues to obtain new power-ups, like hearts, W signs, and bubbles. Once you obtain up to 5 bubbles on the anger board, you'll transform into Super Wolf. And no, you don't start flying around like a superhero, but instead you have an even badass or design, and you can jump all the way up to the ceiling. Oh yeah, speaking of jumping, that can be complicated. To jump normally, you just push the B button, but to do a super jump, you have to push up and B. In certain locations, you need to use this combination, otherwise you just fall into the pit below and die. When you die, the string drays out. Literally. You know how in some games the string will fade out to black or white, like in Resident Evil for example? The string will turn to grey and the sad music plays to the continuous screen. I'll talk about the continuous screen later on. If you get hit enough times or accidentally obtain a blue W, you will revert back to your human form. And for one more kick in the nuts, if you obtain another blue W, you'll lose 10 of your life points. This is sheer crap. The game's already hard enough as it is, I don't need the added difficulty. As you reach near the end of the first stage, you notice that you can't avoid the lightning here. No matter how fast you go, you will always get hit, unless you know how to use the backflip move. You turn the other way around, push the A and B buttons simultaneously, and proceed to do as much as you can to avoid the lightning. By the way, I should mention that each boss has their own strategy to kick your ass. I guess that kinda goes without saying, considering that the game doesn't want to be repetitive with its levels. As you make it to the next stage, one thing that annoyed me while playing was that the only way to start the next level was not to push the star button on the controller, but instead the A button. Logic, what's that? The next stage starts to get even harder as you go through the sewers to make it to the boss. This is really annoying because there are pitfalls everywhere. It's very easy to die without some quick thinking. But once you get to the end of the area, it's pretty easy to beat the boss. As you proceed to the next part of the stage, you'll notice that the animation is actually really well detailed. I'm actually impressed. And the music accompanying it is really well done for the 8-bit era. Actually, it kind of reminds me of some of the music from the Ninja Turtles game on the NES. But those qualities are long forgotten when you start playing again. This stage drives me insane, and it's based on two things. One, you get stuck on everything. It's like as if you're spawning crazy glue. And the second thing is, the goddamn lightning. It just happens whenever it feels like it. Just a toy with you. 
I mean it. One strike and you're dead. God. So to be fair, if you manage to get past this part, you get some more animation of the werewolf creature falling nonchalantly, which I have to say is pretty damn funny. By the time I finally found a way to defeat the second world boss, I was already annoyed to hell and back. How do you think I felt when I arrived in stage 3? I almost felt like throwing my NES controller at the TV. I was starting to realize at this point that this game wasn't made for the average kid who wanted to run a challenging game on a Friday night. It's for hardcore gamers who like to push their rage over the limit. I mean, my god, no matter which direction I go through, it's a death trap. If I stay here, I get attacked by endless creatures. If I go downwards, I have endless pits sent me instant death. I mean, if you don't manage to master this high jump move, you're as fucked as ever in this game. If you're lucky enough to make it past this part of the stage, you then go through a maze that is full of difficult obstacles. Either you end up getting lost, or you end up trying to backflip through more lightning into a pit. And with all this sh** interfering you from reaching the exit, you are stuck with an unending alarm sound that pierces your eardrums. Why did it make it this loud? It's ridiculous. Even if you manage to find a way to get past all this horse shit, the boss is a nightmare. No matter how I try to defeat it, it would hit me from every angle. If I try to use the power ray on the fire boss, he only loses 4 life points. But you lose double that. What kind of BS were these game programmers thinking? Did they realize that it's mainly kids who were playing these games back in the early 1990s? This is where I nearly got a I mean, the game only gives you 5 lives before you're sent all the way back to the beginning of the game. Sure, you can fire one-ups from time to time, but unless you're a hardcore gamer, you're pretty much screwed. In fact, there's not even a password option. Once you lose your five lives, you're back at the start. I realize I'm only gonna be able to complete this game. Now without a certain gene. At first, using Game Gene was pretty beneficial. I could avoid being hit, and I wouldn't lose my life points. And I could get through the levels much faster. There are minor glitches here and there, but nothing that would cause a distraction. Not unlike a certain Super Mario Bros. Game Genie cheat. Yep, it's all smooth sailing from onward out. Until I reach stage 4. I felt confident I could finally finish this game to show you the ending. But I found out about one small glitch. Obviously I couldn't die and if I got hit, it wouldn't cause any damage to me because I was invincible. But that means I would be in flashing mode. NES geeks will mainly understand what I'm talking about, but for all you people who are playing like World of Warcraft or Call of Duty or Grand Theft Auto V, I'll give you a short story about it. In the old 8-bit days, in many games, if you were to get hit by an enemy, you would start to flash on stream, indicating that you've been hit. In the brief few seconds that you are flashing, you will remain invincible to attacks and whatnot. With this game, it's no different than say Super Mario Bros. But I learned by the beginning of the first stage that having the invincible cheat on the whole time was tricks me for continuing on with the game. When I try to jump onto the falling logs, which reminds me of a non Mario game, I just jump through them and sink to the bottom of the river and die. At first I thought I just didn't simply jump at them right. Like I may have missed the mark by a pixel sign, like in many bad games. I guess whoever made these cheats for Game Genie didn't make sure that falling platforms shouldn't count as enemies. It doesn't matter if you are in your human form or werewolf form. Either way, you end up sinking to the bottom of the river. And that's it. The game is over. No matter what I do, I'm screwed. If I try to play it the usual way, I end up dying before I can make it to the first stage. If I try to use Game Genie, I end up over that end. The bottom line, unless you're an extreme hardcore gamer, there is no way on achieving your goal of beating this game. Now you can see why I managed to get this game for only a buck. But if you really want to know what happened in the end, I happen to have the end on standby. Florian and his minions are defeated, the world is once again peaceful, and the werewolf is shown holding up an American flag, showing his victory against Florian's evil. <sighs> now, I'm glad I'm done with that piss poor game. Now that I'm done with it, I can finally get back to sleep. Don't you see what these kind of games do to you?